that thing, miss, and I better shake that thing, yeah, da 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 da, Jody and Rebecca, woman, get busy, just say that booty non-stop when the beat drop, just keep swinging it, get jiggy, get drunk, stop, percolate, anything you want to call it, hostility, if I don't take pity, you want to see you get life on the rhythm of my ride, and my lyrics up about the electric city, yeah, nobody can do you nothing, cause you don't know your destiny, yo, sexy ladies, one part with us, you know, the car with us, them now, why? And you're on the morning drive on WSRF 1580 AM. This is your boy, Warnell, and you know I'm here with the ladies. How we doing, girls? Hey, how you guys doing today? Why do you sound like that? Hey, because I'm excited. We have so many special on the line. I'm so excited. Are you flirting this already? Is my, this is my sexy voice. Hello, you guys. This is Fabiola. Why are you flirting on the air already? I'm Thank you. Flirting. Once again, we're covering the One Caribbean Music Festival coming to South Florida. And on the line, we have one of the major headlines for the event, uh, Mr. Sean Paul on the line. Good morning, Mr. Paul. Yo, what's up, man? How are everybody doing? We're doing good. How are you today? Good, man. Can't complain. Giving thanks for life and moving through still, man, you know? I love your accent. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Thank you, dude. Are you calling from Jamaica or are you here in the States? Yeah, I'm actually in Jamaica right now. It's sunny and breezy. Oh, my good gosh. Weather. We envy you. We envy you. Florida is kind of... <laughs> Florida's getting colder and colder. Yeah, I know. I mean, uh, the, the climate is changing back and forth here and there, but, um, you know, the topic stay. We are good with the same. same right. with as long as it gets back to 80s, eventually we'll be fine over here. Yeah, right. But I want to thank you so much for taking your time out to join us. I know our time is not long, so we definitely want to, you know, just get some information from you, a little bit of background for those who may not know you for some crazy reason. Give him a little bit of who Mr. Sean Paul is. Now, Sean Paul is a, a reggae, I must say, dance hall legend, uh, not only back home in Jamaica, but here in the States and internationally. And once again, he'll be joining uh, many others on stage December 13th and 14th at the One Caribbean Music Festival um, at uh, Central Broward Regional Park. It's such a long name, strange name. Now, just a little bit of background information from you, you know, uh, I know you started off in sports with your family. How did that work out for you, and how did you transition to music? Uh, yeah, you know, sports was like a family tradition. My grandfather was the first, was on the first water polo team in Jamaica, and his kids, which he had seven, they all swam. Uh, my father and his brother, um, I think, were probably the bigger representatives in in the family. Um, he met my mom at the stadium pool when they were 13 years old. She used to swim for Jamaica too. So um, it kind of it kind of was like when I grew up. Basically, my mom and dad used to teach swimming. Um, you know, every summer to kids, and as a little kid, used used to be swimming everywhere. Um, then I started to represent Jamaica myself about age 13, um, and I did that in water polo and swimming until I was about age 24. Um, so basically, all during that time, I'm a high school kid, and I'm, I'm you know, getting into music, and it, it, it was really a gradual transition. It wasn't really, oh, just stop sports now, stop swimming, and go straight to music. So over those years of from being 13 years old, you know, being a music fan, dance hall and hip-hop music fan, um, and, you know, getting and copying all the albums and getting all, you know, in tune with people's lyrics and music and uh, rhythms. And, and then by the time I was about 17 years old, I thought, when I was 15 to 17, I thought maybe I'd be a producer. And I got a keyboard and, you know, my mom kind of bought me bought me a, a, a what they call a, a extra keyboard. Uh, a flea, a, a flea market keyboard. <laughs> yeah, so after me trying to build people's beats back on that, we had a drum section and, you know, we could play different instruments on it. Um, I started to write rhymes, and then about 17 to 19, I started to, like, really try to go to studios every, like, so. In the mornings, it's swimming training. At lunchtime, it was, uh, and then I'd be at school. Then at lunchtime, I'd do weights training, and then by night, I'm swimming training again. And then I'd leave the, the, the pool and go straight to the studios. And then I'd, I'd be back home like about like 12 o'clock at night. And I'd okay. start doing that. And then gradually it just took over my life. It started to be, you know, the, more of, of what I love to do. There was less competition in sports and swimming for me because everybody was going away to college. And I was here in Jamaica. So, okay. 
Yeah, I kind of, kind of gradually, gradually moved into that, and so I mean, I guess the rest is history. I got to record my first single in two, in I'm sorry, 1996, okay. and um, since then um, I've, I've been able to have a lucrative recording career. You know what I mean? So you kind of, you kind of received the support from the beginning from your parents when they bought you that flea market um, <laughs> keyboard. <laughs> actually, actually, nah, because at the time when my mom bought bought that keyboard, my father was in prison. Okay. Um, he was in prison since I was 13 to about 19 years old. When she bought me the keyboard, she didn't want me to do music because she, she's an artist herself. And, you know, the art world is struggling. She's like, one day people are going to like your work and you're going to feel on top of the world. And the, uh, the next day people are going to say, ah, oh, that's whack, there's something new. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it really hurts if you're an emotional person, you're an artist. You, you, you know, so she didn't want me to do it. Um, but basically... Uh, she wanted me to study music or something and have a talent like that. So that's why the keyboard came in. But, you know, life is funny, and, and sometimes the, the the greatest thing that you have the fear of is it, not going to really, um, it, it, the scenario is not going to work out that way. And, and the simplest thing that you don't even think of might just happen. So, um, you know, it's basically what happened with, with myself and my mom, and now she's, you know, she's proud and, uh, you know, she still, she still is um, affected by, uh, you know, the type of business I'm in. She don't like it sometimes, but still, at the same point in time, yeah, they they support um, in being proud and whatever. But at first, it was a taboo. Um, okay. Okay. You know, people in my in, where I'm from in Jamaica is uptown, and it was dancehall music was considered oh that's ghetto music, but it spoke to me. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. it spoke to, it spoke to who the person who I am, how I converse with my friends. Um, Every day, what we what we speak about, what what what's on our minds, um, and so with current topics, and it kind of just it 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 was the best way to express myself to me, and it still is in terms of to get a mass of people to understand how I'm feeling about a girl, or okay. get a mass of people to understand how I'm feeling about my life. Um, that's why I'm in music, you know. When did you know you had a musical talent? When did you realize that? Oh my God, I know how to sing, or oh, I know how to rap. When did you re realize that? Uh, I knew I knew I could sing when I was a kid, but when I was about 13, I started to kind of emulate people like Super Cat and Shabba Ranks mm -hmm. uh -huh. and sing back their songs. People would be like, "Oh, yo, you sound like Cat." So um, basically, it was just doing back other people's lyrics. It wasn't really me going, "Oh, I could rap." Um, as I said, I started to you know fool around with the keyboard and try to make other people's rhythms back, and then my own lyrics started to flow. Um, well, I said when I was about 15. That started to happen. All right, so then you let you know you decided that music was gonna be something you're interested in. I know you ended up meeting up with Jeremy Harding. You ended up recording yeah. the first single. So now, when when the debut album was getting put together, what were some of the inspirations for Stage One? Uh, for Stage One, it was just like you know, I was just trying to put out singles. I mean, I remember trying to be recorded. I remember going to a big stage show in Jamaica called Sting. It happens on Boxing Day every year. And it really defines what the next year musically is going to sound like in Jamaica um, in terms of, of dancehall music especially. Um, if you do well on that show, you you basically, you know, you, you have a, a, a lucrative career the next year. Um, so every year I remember from when I was about 17 years old going, standing in the crowd, looking up there going, ah, next year that's me, next year that's me, next year that's me. And it didn't really happen until like I'm 10 years after that. Um, but you know, um, I guess it, it, it's just the, that determination that just helps you to kind of see, the, you know, the bigger picture instead of just being like, oh, I didn't get through with my first recording, um, um, so I'm gonna put it down. But what what really happened to me was I did one recording and I got enthused and I was like, oh, more recordings, more recordings. So it wasn't really at the time putting together an album. I just wanted to do more singles. I just wanted to. You know, the Jamaican dancehall market, especially the single-driven market, it always has been. And, um, you know, it, it was a phenomenon when my when people like Shaggy and my album comes and sells millions because we usually just put singles out and tour. Okay. And so it started to transition at that point um, where, you know, people like VP Records started to come to me and ask me, hey, hey, why don't you think about putting an album together? Your singles are doing well. You know, so it was a gradual process. Again, it wasn't something that I just said, Hey, I'm gonna be this artist. Hey, I'm gonna put this album out. Hey, it's gonna be named this. It's gonna be named that. And that's how my whole career has been, even up to today. I still have like 
about two albums worth of music right now. I've been I keep on doing music, and so I don't know what the next album is going to be named. I I don't do it like that. I don't I don't say this product is called Pepsi and then go sell it. <laughs> I cannot develop it. It it tastes different every time. Mm -hmm. It sounds different every time. It feels different every time. But it, it's also reminiscent of um, the same thing that the quality sound that you always get from me. So it wasn't and it still isn't. Oh, I'm going to call this, I'm going to make an album, I'm going to call it this, and it's going to be about that. It's just free-flowing. I think that's what life is supposed to be. Uh, art is supposed to reflect life. And so it, it, it's about my mood every day. It's about how I'm feeling. It's about, um, you know, just, just uh, yeah, a little bit of me in the music. That's really what it is about. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember when I was in middle school, and I would go home and watch 106 in Park, and yeah. it was in 2003, and then, you know, it had to count down. And the number one for, like, weeks on end was Give yeah. Me the Light. And wow. from then on was this single after single after single, hit after hit. How did you respond to your early success in the, um, I guess, the American industry? Yeah, in the international community, it started yeah. to happen about 2001, about 2003, 4. It was, like, you know, the pinnacle of shit, like, it was, like, so big. Um and, and that lasted until about 07, I think, in terms of me being on top of the game. Every single being something presented was, was um, you know, really great on, on, on TV and radio and all that. Um, so, yeah, it felt amazing. I mean, you know, as I said before, growing in this career from feeling maybe I'll be a producer at age 14 or 15 and then thinking, no, maybe I'll rhyme and then well, maybe I'll put an album together. I've done so much singles. Maybe... And then you know it just it it, it it keep on rolling on. So it's always a surprise to me when people are like, "Oh, I love your work," um, because it's not something that I that I basically was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be the you know who I am today." I never really thought of this. I never dreamt of this scenario. I, I dreamt that I was going to do something great, and I dreamt that I wanted to do music, but I didn't know how far it would take me. And so I'm always thankful. Um, we were just talking about those BET days in terms of. You know, the 106 on Park and the TRL on MTV, those days are done now, and it's now all about kind of internet. I mean, 106 on Park still exists, but it's not as um, important now because people got, you know, the SoundClouds and the and the, I, right. the, the, the YouTube channels mm -hmm. and all of this stuff, so they can watch videos literally on their phone most mostly any time they like. Um, so those days are, are different, but when it was in full gear, it was a crazy environment um, to be in. Now, when you went international and you started crossing over to here in the States, you were you were featured in a lot of other performers, a lot of other artists, um, from R&B to rappers, a little bit of um, some Spanish music. The Latin yeah. community had you, some rock music as well. How was it yeah. for you with, you know, testing out the other markets and just, you know, experiencing the other kinds of music? I mean, you know, I, I think that when an artist um, first starts to do his work um, in terms of, you know, music, you definitely want to stick to your genre, a genre. Um, so when I first started, I, I wanted to be, I wanted to be very good in the dancehall community. I wanted dancehall people, people of Jamaica that love dancehall, which is most of the country, and most of the young kids. Um, basically, I want, I wanted them to appreciate it and them to like it, you know what I mean? So it's just been a, a, a gradual process from, from those times um, coming up. As I keep saying, it, it, it's not something that was just like a planned thing, you know what I mean? So now after you've done that, you know, we're, we're all Haitian, Haitian-American over here. We love all music, but now are, are we going to maybe see in the near future a Sean Paul and T. Vice, a little compa music in the middle of one of the songs? Yeah, you know, I mean, I've done work with... Um, it's actually, uh, I have a song with, with a Haitian artist right now. I'm trying to remember her name, man. I did it. I did this last year. It, it's supposed to be playing over there. There's a video for it also. So excuse me for not remembering her name. She's a big artist there. But um, so it, it's like I've done so much work. You know, I've been doing work in, as you said, the Latino community. Big up to Faruco and um, Enter the Zona and Enrique Iglesias for having me on that track. Um, big up also to... Um, you know, the Afrobeat world, Fused, uh, Fused ODG, someone I've been doing work with, and also um, Timaya. And so, yeah, the, the Haitian, uh, you know, connection, the music, 
definitely um I, i've done work but yeah definitely I, I, i'll be looking out to do some more i think that right now as i said it was just a natural state of me trying to be the best in dance or music and then it evolved to i basically became the 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 pinnacle or the or the benchmark to say yeah that's where you want to get to if you're a dance or artist you want to get to that point and then so after doing that for a couple of years as i said um you know you got to leave space for people to do their thing and also i got to expand and and go on and and, and do other interject my dance or music into other musics such as you said like you know the rock music the the, the the um the the latino um haitian music and and um afrobeat so that's my thing right now in terms of yeah what can i expand in that respect but i'm still interjecting what i i have as my dance or roots into everything that i do okay and we know a lot of haitian love you we know we love your song so i have two uh, questions first when are you do you plan to go to haiti to do a concert or anything Yeah, actually, I did my first concert in Haiti in uh, two years ago in Christmas. Was two years oh, ago? Oh wow! Yeah, 2012. It would have been 2012 Christmas. I think it was uh, Boxing Day. I think. Yeah. Okay. It was a big concert. It was a good vibe. I mean, Haiti's always shown me love, you know, um, and uh, people from Haiti. Ev everywhere I am in the states, that there's a lot of concentration of Caribbean people. You always find. A lot of Jamaicans and especially Haitians and always show me love, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. uh, big up to the whole community. Um, you know, I, I was involved with, with, with um a few a few um of the charity events that happened when in the in the um the hurricane the the earthquake, the earthquake okay. in in oh ten or oh nine, whenever that was I think. Oh ten. Uh, that those were events in Miami and um yeah, I'm just looking forward to, to actually going back to, to Haiti. To um to just have a good time and entertain the people and yeah get the cultures kind of mixed you know what I mean I think that's what music is for. I'm about to say shoot us an email we'll be out exactly. there. Exactly when you go and let us know we can go with you too. Now definitely keep, keeping Haiti in mind have there been any other performances that you were just so memorable to you that you just had a blast at? Um you know I I think at, at first you you know you're like oh this show was better than that one this show, I mean when I'm talking about from my barbecue days back in in 1996 right so every show is like you try to expand on it you try to be better than you was until it reaches a point where it's so fluent and it's so um you know so it's so I I shouldn't say easy to do but it's just so it's so fluent that you you actually love being on stage mostly of all so I, I like you know I, i don't mind the travel i don't mind seeing different places but i really i'm enthused to get on that stage when there's a tour if it's like um you know a few shows this you know like one or two shows this week and then a couple of days rest and then a couple of shows next week i'm just dying for those shows to, to, to kind of kick off and happen um i like a tour when it's like every day it's grueling um like the last tour I did like that was 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 really in um Germany. We did like fourteen shows in I would say probably about twelve days. So uh -huh. it was like a few days rest, it was just like boom 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 boom. And it was pretty cool. You know what I mean? I like that kind of thing there and that's what it is about for me. The performance and also the studio mm -hmm. is the most how do, is how the do most you keep um up? how do you keep it's up the most fun that? that I have in the biz, yeah. Okay, and how do you keep up with with touring, with performing, and your family and your personal life? How do you keep up everything? How do you keep everything together? Yeah, that that's kind of it's become more and more difficult over the years, you know, because um, you know, when it first started, I'm I'm a I'm a single um, male. I'm going out there, I'm doing my thing, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then over the years now, um, you know, I've I've been married in the past two years. Um, it's definitely things to consider where, where you, you, you have to consider a whole other human being. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, not to mention when I'm going to have kids, that's going to be crazy too. I'm very close with my mom, still with my grandma, with my brother. He's instrumental in my um, in my, in my my um, career. And he's got a little niece now. So it's like, yeah, I'm juggling a lot right now. I'm also producing. Um, so there's other artists to consider, not only myself. So it's a full table. It's a full plate. And when people say, 
oh, uh, you know, you, you, you went to a faraway place like, you know, Australia, New Guinea. I just came back from there two weeks ago. But, but they're like, what did you see? And sometimes we do get to see stuff. But a lot of times it's like, you know, I'm there for a show. I'm there to do my thing. And I'm basically wanted to get back home to my normal life. I got a normal life. Okay. Um, and, and, and being the artist, that's a full life. And then, so the normal life is also, as you know, it's full. So it's every day, it's, it's constant. And, it, and it's um, something that uh, is where I'm a lazy dude in terms of when it comes to time, you know, Jamaicans. <laughs> is, oh, w- w- it's all yeah, of us island folk, all of us island folk. Exactly. So it, but it comes into a point now where you, you, you have to prioritize and be like, well, I got to be up. I got to do, get on my grind and, uh, and I got to be there on time. So that's what's changed because of all of this uh, a lot for me uh, my punctuality and that kind of um that kind of discipline yeah all right so now over the years we've we've had a lot of your collaborations heard a lot of music we've seen a lot of crazy hairstyles from you as well what can we expect on uh saturday december 13th at the one caribbean music festival from sean paul there's a mad energetic vibe you know i mean I'm, i mean as i said i'm fluent with my show right now i put together a new band almost about three years ago Two members from Jamaica, two members from the States. Um, my, my, my band leader is one of the biggest band leaders here in, um, in, in Jamaica, and he put together the whole band for me. Um, crazy vibe, you know. Um, whenever I, I, I do shows nowadays, especially with the band, people are, are blown away. My drummer is an amazing dude. Two weeks before I hired him, he was in the subway playing, bro. And so I, I'm just, you know, I'm grateful that he's, He's able to, um, you know, get, help us with his talent and the rest of the band too. Um, just a great show we got put together in terms of, you know, um, entertainment, enjoyment, fun. Yeah, that's the kind of thing. Energy-wise. Um, also, I mean, you know, I ain't leaving out my dancers. They, they're they're going to be with me. So, just look for all our own energetic vibe. Um, and yeah, you know, I'm doing my hits, I'm doing new stuff. As I told you, I got both two albums put together, mm-hmm. sitting down waiting to give the people. And so, um, pretty soon you'll be hearing all of those, but I'll be doing that on the show next week. All right. Okay. And, and when I'll just mention your hair, I wanted to say that a lot of people did cry when you cut your hair, when you had this <laughs> new hairstyle, you know, you had dreads, it was yeah. so cute, but now you cut everything. So how is yeah. your hair now? Is it long or short? No, I still got my mohawk going on. Uh, oh my gosh! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, you know, I just got tired of it. You know what I mean? So some people, yeah, I, if you 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 should know as a as a as a lady, you get up every day. Uh, you don't want to see yourself in the same style, the same clothes, that's the true, same. That's true. You know what I mean? It's no. Nah, so I, I rocked that for seven years, mm-hmm. and although people w- w- had the audacity to say to me, "No, you're known for your braids," I was like, "No, nah, I thought I was known for my lyrics." <laughs> <laughs> my 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 crazy cool uh, swag, my voice, my sexy voice to the girl, and my sweet voice. You know what I mean? <laughs> so to me, I think there's just so much more about me that people uh, just miss when it comes down to what what they they they're thinking about. Um, you know, the look is one thing, yeah, but there's so much more to me. So I don't really care how I look. I think probably soon I'm gonna start. I'm going to start doing some crazier hairstyles than I got right now and see what people have to say. Yeah, we love <laughs> you. We love you with the braids or without the braids. So. <laughs> Respect, baby. All right, so just a, before we wrap up, you know, a final word to those who are looking forward to, to hearing from you, to seeing you, and to the performance on this Saturday, once again, at the One Caribbean Music Festival. All of us South Floridians, those flying in, the other artists, you know, look out, Sean Paul's in there. Any last words you want to tell them? Yeah, obviously it's going to be an epic event. I mean, there's so much great performers on there. As I told you, I'm bringing my energy, I'm bringing my dancers, bringing my band. Please come out early. It's a, you know, it's the show starts two o'clock in the day. The 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 the, the venue's open two o'clock in the day. So, um, you know, what I mean, you don't want to miss nothing. There's as as I said, a lot of amazing performances uh, to happen throughout the day. So. Great concert, great vibe, and I'm um, looking forward to seeing everybody come party, you know what I mean? Now, before we sign off, there's something that we always have our guests do for us. You have to say, Anale. It's a Creole phrase, and it means let's go. So it's a great way to get the people not only to listen to your music, but to definitely come see you this Saturday. So what do you say? How do you say? Anale. Anale. 
Oh, no, All right, yeah. so on the count of three, you got to give me a really good one from the soul. Right, cool. If you want to sing it, I'm not mad, but you know. Oh. <laughs> one, two, three. Hey, yo, on Nale, Shonda Paul, and we there on the way. You know how we do, we don't play. All of the girls, them jump and say, way, way. Oh, 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 <laughs> that was Sean Paul on with the morning You just made too. my day. You that just made great. my day. <laughs> Thank you so much. I know you have to go Love ahead. It. You're a busy man. Thank you so much for All taking right, this time you. out for being you with us. Too. And we're going to end the interview. We're going to let Sean Paul ride out with She Doesn't Mind. Thank you so much, guys. Stay tuned. Respect. Ready for dunk on it, tag team in for your truck, rip up on it Hands up, I be burning 